Hello loves and welcome to this week's episode of Homemade Kitchen. I'm Love Deepa and today we are dedicating this episode to our dear friend Omar who said that he loves having cake for breakfast and I thought to myself well let's give you that cake but let's make it a little bit better for your body and a little bit better for your soul. So today we're going to be doing my version of banana nut bread with a little bit of a peanut butter drizzle. It's a great thing that can be used as a treat, a snack, or in Amar's case as breakfast. Today's recipe is going to be vegan and gluten-free, all organic ingredients, and filled with tons of nutrients and health benefits, but most importantly filled with love and tasty goodness. Come on, let's do this. So with today's recipe, the longest thing is the actual baking time, but the prep work is super easy. We're gonna go preheat our oven to 350 degrees because the recipe bakes for about 50 minutes to an hour. Now, the only thing about this recipe is you do need three large, super ripe bananas. So in this case, those bright yellow or greenish bananas at the supermarket may not cut it, but if you've had some bananas lying on your counter for a couple of days, they're getting these nice black spots on them. That's when the natural sugars of the bananas have come out and it's perfect for this recipe. So we're gonna combine all the wet ingredients first in our bowl, mix them together, and then add in our dry ingredients. We want the batter to be a little lumpy so it's not over mixed, so the texture of the bread is more cake-like and less bread-like. All right, let's do this. Now, as with most baked good recipes, you do want a somewhat accurate measurement. Now, most bakers will tell you everything has to be exact to get the right recipe, but with these kind of breads, I feel like there's a little more wiggle room. So I'm gonna give you my measurements. Now, feel free to play around with them if you like your bread softer, different te texture, different consistency. This is just a basic bread recipe with a couple added ingredients. We're gonna take these three super spotted ripe bananas. It is a cake, so we do want it to be a little sweeter. So what I did was instead of using sugar, because you know, Sugar is great sweetener if you don't want any added nutrition, but dates, however, if you use them as a sweetener, you're getting added iron, added fiber, tons of minerals and nutrients, and dates are really good for your lungs. So when you eat dates, it helps pull congestion out of your lungs. So during allergy season, I figure why not something nice to keep our lungs healthy. So what I've done is I've taken about roughly about half a cup of dates, chopped them up and just soaked them in warm water. That's just to soften them up. Now I'm gonna use my spoon and we're gonna mash it together. Now you could put this in a food processor, at least this part of it, if you wanted it really smooth. I want my bread to actually be a little bit more rustic. So I'm gonna just hand mash it. And we're gonna add the rest of the wet ingredients, which means that we're gonna add about a third of a cup of oil. But to keep this recipe extra healthy, we're actually gonna mix a little bit of coconut oil and a little bit of unsweetened applesauce. It's gonna give the same benefits of the oil, the moisture, but a lot less fat and just some added health benefits of the apple. I can get this jar open. So we're gonna take about a third of a cup. So I'm actually gonna mix a little bit of coconut oil and a little bit of the applesauce. Since we're using about a third of a cup of the oil or oil substitute, I wanna make sure that I take care of that. Most recipes say a teaspoon of vanilla, but I'm actually gonna put a teaspoon and a half of good organic vanilla in. Maybe it doesn't look as appetizing right now, but smells amazing right now. Almost like bananas foster in here. Now we're gonna add a little bit of the spice mixture in. Now I'm adding cardamom because I love the flavor of cardamom in all the desserts. And I'm just putting about, let's say, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of cardamom. With spices, I almost never measure. We're doing about a teaspoon of Ceylon cinnamon. And I'm gonna put a nice little couple shakes of nutmeg. You could add ginger if you like warming spices, but since it's summertime, I wanted to add just a little bit of warming spice, but not too much. So we're gonna leave the ginger out today. Now for the dry ingredients. This recipe doesn't generally call for flaxseed, but flaxseed is a great egg substitute, but it's also just a great source of nutrition and omegas. So I'm actually gonna put two teaspoons. Actually, no, let's do three. Three teaspoons of flaxseed in the wet ingredients first because that way the flaxseed gets activated while mixing the other dry ingredients together. When you add flaxseed to liquid, it will become a little thicker, kind of like an egg. It's not mandatory, but 
I am gonna sift the baking powder and baking soda uh, into the mixture. I'm using one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of baking soda. The baking soda is gonna allow the mix to have a nice crust on the top. So I am gonna sift that in so that I'm not getting chunks of the dried ingredients in there. And I have about one and three quarters cup of almond flour and tapioca flour mixed together. And that's gonna be the rest of our dry ingredients. And this is where we don't wanna stir a lot. That's why we wanted all the other ingredients to be nice and mixed in before we added the flour. And as for all baking ingredients, pinch of salt. It's nice and mixed in, but still chunky. And I'm gonna add in my add-ins now. So I'm adding in about half a cup of chopped walnuts. And because I like my bread slash cake a little sweeter, about a quarter to half a cup of chopped dates. These I did not soak because I do want them to remain kind of chewy, almost add a nice little texture when you get a bite of them. And then I have a little loaf pan that I'm gonna grease up. I'm using a little avocado oil because it's a flavor neutral oil. We're gonna take that one bowl mixture Pack it in nice and tight into this. Now I'm glad that there's enough room because this is gonna rise. So we wanna make sure that it's not all the way filled so that it has room to grow. This is a great way to get a little extra air out of the pan. See, you'll see a little bubble, air bubble pop out. We wanna make ours a little extra pretty. So I'm gonna take now I do recommend maybe trying this with, on a uh, cutting board instead of in your hands, but you can take sliced uh, banana. Just make a nice little roll of bananas. And we're gonna do just a little sprinkling of cinnamon on top. Going in the oven for about 50 minutes. We'll check it in 50 minutes. And I'm gonna put it on the top rack so it has room to rise. We'll see you back in a about 50 minutes. So I've never made this drizzle before, but I figured if we're gonna go for breakfast cake, then we should probably go for a nice peanut butter drizzle because I think peanut butter and bananas make such a beautiful pair. The little bit of salty from the peanuts and the sweet from the bananas. This is gonna be a simple drizzle. These are just things I have in my pantry that I thought would work well together. Uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of organic peanut butter, some organic cashew yogurt, a little bit of maple syrup to make it sweet, and then a pinch of salt to enhance the saltiness of the peanuts. And a little bit of hot water just to loosen it up. I'm putting about, let's say, three heaping spoons of peanut butter. When you're buying peanut butter I or any kind of nut butter, I really recommend looking for something that has one or two ingredients. It should have the nut, and maybe some salt. If it has added oils or added preservatives, it's taking away from the flavor and the nutrition of what you're getting. Um, now, the stuff that's pure does have a shorter shelf life, so you do wanna use it up faster, but um, I happen to love getting just the ones that are really simple. This one has through two ingredients, organic roasted peanuts and less than 1% salt. I'm gonna add about two spoons and a quarter of this is a Kite Hill almond yogurt. I'm gonna add one more spoon of yogurt, a little bit of this warm water, just a little bit to help it loosen up, a little splash of maple syrup, and a little pinch of salt. I'm realizing it needs a little more peanut, a little more water, a little more maple syrup, Okay, after a few moment, minutes of uh, some whipping and a little bit of elbow grease, you're left with this beautiful whipped glaze. Now it does have the vegan yogurt in it, so you do wanna normally store it in the refrigerator. I'm gonna put it in the fridge while our cake is baking. I am gonna top it off with a little pink salt right before I drizzle it on the cake. But let's see how the cake turns out in a little bit. Okay, so it's been about 51 minutes and we're ready to take the bread or cake out of the oven. Oof, just that 
Little bit of crispness along the edges. Definitely needs to cool for about 15 to 20 minutes. It will settle down a little bit. Now, if you try to cut it now, it's gonna fall apart. Patience is key. I know it smells amazing, but we're gonna let it sit. You can see that even just bringing it out of the oven, it's already starting to sit down a little bit in the center. So we just wanna let it set and finish its cooking process. So let it cool for about 20 minutes. Okay, so the bread may not have totally cooled, but it's been about 20 minutes and we're gonna go for it. As you can see, the bread has settled down a little bit in the center. The top has a nice crust on it. That's thanks to the baking soda that we use. Still really warm. With the substitutions, this is probably gonna be a little softer than I originally planned. Ooh. So I think that the bread definitely needs a little more cooling time because it's still really hot. We're gonna add a nice dollop of this peanut butter cream that we just made. So. Although it doesn't look perfect, it sure tastes perfect. It's light, it's fluffy, it's moist. It has tons of protein, tons of nutrients, minerals. It's vegan and gluten-free. And there's tons of other additions you can add to it. If you have a sweet tooth, you can add some chocolate to it, add some apples, um, whatever fruits or nuts you like. But this banana peanut butter combination is my favorite. Don't forget the secret ingredient is always love.